Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Welcome everybody to another edition of Primetime Local News. Connor Chan and Elise Darwish okay. here on this election day here in the province of Alberta. We got lots on the go today here. We'll be out and about covering you all the stuff in our area, including our late, which we'll bring later in the late night, including our question of the day. Yes. Are, have you gone out and voted yet? Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of viewers said yes, you have. I know yeah, I have, so. it was uh, on the, our question of the day. We got a lot of comments and like you said, it was about 91% of people said that they went out and voted. So that's yeah. great. And of course, that advanced polls and you know, they reached those numbers. Yes, record breaking. Yeah, that's voting. very exciting. Yeah, it's exciting when people really want to get out there and voice their opinion. It's yeah. important. And so make a I think it's a great idea. As well. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Well, we'll have all this and more coming up later on in the show, but right now let's send over to Brett Holden, who's on location. Well, we are channeling our inner wilderness man as uh, we're going to get our hair all messy and not shave for a while and we're going to be hitting uh, the hunting and the fishing and we are going to be even talking about uh, some archery as well here at Wildside Outdoors. We'll be talking to Cal who is the expert on uh, so much things, so many things rather I should say here and is the owner as well. So we'll be learning more about uh, different fishing rods as well and so much more. So stay tuned for that. We'll have a little bit more coming up from here but for now let's head back in the studio. People around the world are in shock after the Notre Dame Cathedral in France caught fire yesterday. Rick Lucas, who works with the Lloydminster Catholic School Division and has visited Notre Dame, says the fire is gut-wrenching. I mean, it's so sad. Like, it's, um, it's, the, it's, it's one of the places in the world, right? You know, the, the rose windows, um, the fact, I was telling my students, uh, the fact that each of those windows has its own name. The statues on the facade uh, on the east side um, are all of the, the, the kings of the Old Testament, right? Lucas also says that it's not just the beauty of the Notre Dame that makes it special, but also the history of the building. You know, the coronation of, of how many different kings of, of, of France happened there, and the emperor, right? And Napoleon was there. It's just like... There's no other place like it other than, you know, it'd be, I guess, equivalent to like the Vatican or the Sistine Chapel. It's like, what happens when the irreplaceable gets damaged to that point? The Lloyd and District Co-op has announced their new CEO. Leanne Hawes has been with Co-op for nearly a decade and has held roles such as Vice President of Operations and Interim CEO and now has been appointed CEO. In the 10 years she's been with Co-op, she has accomplished quite a bit. So when I joined Lloydminster and District Co-op um, nearly 10 years ago, uh, our sales was in and around the area of about 80 million. Uh, over the last 10 years, I have helped, certainly with a great team, uh, the accomplishment of about $30 million in capital expansion. Uh, and we are proud to report our sales this year at $154 million. Haas' position as CEO takes effect May 1st. And May 4th is the 21st annual MS Walk and registration is currently open. This walk helps people take a step in the right direction as they will be raising funds for the MS Society. Some of the funds will be going to our programs and services and advocacy and the rest of the money will be going to research. With the success it has had in the past, it shows how involved the community is. Going into the 21st annual walk, that just shows the testimony of our community and how they believe that it is an important uh, cause for them to come out and celebrate or support the MS walk. If you want to register for the MS walk, contact Tammy for more information. And now we're going to go to Brett Holden, who was on location earlier today. We're back here at Wildside Outdoors and Cal joins us once again. Now uh, we're talking about uh, hunting this time around and uh, let's talk about uh, just the safety around uh, the hunting. I know we're kind of getting into kind of the early hunting season, spring season. Yep. Uh, so let's talk about that. Sure. We've got uh, spring go snow goose season is on. So of course, safety wise, you make sure your guns are all unloaded and all that type of thing, especially when you're in the trucks and all that. Um, the game wardens do like to charge you if you have guns loaded, so don't be doing that kind of thing. Uh, make sure you have all your decoys and that kind of stuff on and with you. And, of course, your ground blinds. Uh, everybody should know that uh, if you're using electronic calls, snow goose only in Saskatchewan and Alberta this time of year. Of course, in the fall, you are allowed to use uh, 
Canada goose and that kind of thing later on in the fall. Um, and that's in Saskatchewan. Um, bear season is also on right now. April 1st was Alberta and uh, April 15th uh, for Saskatchewan. And so there again, there's some more safety things you should be taking. Of course, guys are sitting in tree stands and there's bears all over the place. Uh, we take backups like shotguns and that kind of thing just to make sure nothing goes wrong. But you can take bear spray or something like that if you uh, feel a little bit more safer with that and not having to hurt the animal. 90% uh, of the time, guys, if they're coming up the tree, they're just coming for a visit. You don't need to be shooting them and, uh, and killing them because they are coming up the tree. Believe me, you'll know when they come up that tree if they're dangerous or not. They come up very fast and very aggressive and very mean. So uh, don't take them out unless you absolutely have to. Beautiful. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. We'll have a little bit more coming up from here at Wildside Outdoors, but for now, let's head back into the studio. All right, thanks very much, Brett. Taking a look at your current temperature right now, five degrees right now for us here in Lloydminster with mostly cloudy that we've had throughout the day. Had a bit of spitting rain earlier on in the daytime and a bit of sunshine, but currently as it sits right now, we're sitting at five degrees. Taking a look at some wind for this uh, right now, we're over that 30 kilometers, so a big difference compared to what we had last hour over coming in from the west at 32 kilometers an hour there. Some records for this time of year, 26 degrees was our warmest day back in 1984, while minus 15 was our coldest back in 1989 and let's take a look at the satellite radar map as I speak of cloud coverage and some rain. We're going to be seeing that for the next little bit here in the uh, in the in today rather is some precipitation areas and cloud coverage are going to be coming from the southern parts heading into the Lloydminster area and coming in from that Edmonton and to heading in towards our Marwayne, Vegreville, uh, Lloydminster, Vermilion, Bonneville regions as well. So just be on the lookout for that as well. Take a look at some other current temperatures right now. Five degrees currently for us here in Lloydminster, 13 degrees in Edmonton. Edmonton and Cold Lake, 12 degrees in Athabasca, 11 out in Whitecourt, Edson and Rocky Mountain House, 9 degrees for Jasper as well, 13 out in Meadow Lake right now, 12 degrees for Prince Albert, 10 degrees for Melfort, and 12 degrees for uh, Saskatoon. As we take a look at some regional temperatures, more in depth there, uh, we currently lost the number there for North Battleford, but they're currently sitting around the same re areas that we are. So zero overnight for North Battleford, 16 degrees uh, the daytime high tomorrow with a uh, sun and cloud mix there. With minus one overnight in Cold Lake with a few clouds, really up to 14 degrees tomorrow with the daytime high there with a sun cloud mix. Overnight for us here in Lloydminster, zero degrees overnight with a rain snow mix possibly. 15 degrees will be the daytime high for us tomorrow. And then heading into the next three days, 15 degrees on Thursday as well with more clouds than sun. And then with a low of one degree and then low of four on Friday with a high of 13 degrees with the winds though still picking up. It's around the northwest coming in at 26 kilometers an hour. That's a first look at your weather. We'll have more primetime local news coming up after the break. Welcome back. The march of club root on the prairies remains a concern to the egg industry. Gerard Lampo finds out why catching the disease early is key if a producer is to survive club root. Most of the resting spores remain dormant in the soil. Really it is about making sure that you find it early in your field. And once you do find it early, it's really managing it so you can still grow a canola crop. As producers prepare for another growing season, keeping a lookout for club root is essential. Regional crop specialist Aaron Campbell, who is based in North Battleford, is offering hope. I'm having a good rotation where we have a minimum of a two-year break between host crops such as canola, camelina, um, or, and also not having any volunteers or weeds present during that break. Uh, using a good club root resistant variety uh, to help keep the, the resistance up. Um, and as well as just having good overall agronomic practices. Apart from using resistant varieties, producers need to clean and sanitize equipment to avoid transporting soil between fields. Making sure that you're removing at least uh, clumps of soil the best you can between fields. Um, and then when you have new field or, or equipment that you don't know the history of, maybe doing a little bit more of a sanitization where you can pressure wash it down and then using a bleach solution to make sure it's fully clean. 
In the hectic pace of seeding season and harvest time, it's difficult to get a thorough cleansing of equipment, but the goal remains to limit the transfer of soil between fields as clubroot is a soil-borne disease. Producers with clubroot are still looking at two growing seasons without the cash crop. Well, you want to make sure that you've given that two full years of break from that canola host. You can use a soil sample to try and understand your spore levels if you haven't done that already or to know if it's good to put it back into canola. If you have low levels, then you could use a canola resistant variety. Scouting for the disease remains a basic agronomic practice. Finding the disease is key and finding it early um, so that you have good management options going forward. Gerard Lampau, Primetime Local News. Canadian dairy producer Saputo has closed a $1.7 billion deal to acquire Dairy Quest Group of Britain. Dairy Quest manufactures and sells cheese, butter, spreads and oils and has about 1,100 employees in seven locations across the United Kingdom. The transaction announced February 22nd was payable in cash from a new bank loan. Saputo says it has invested in a well-established and successful industry player with a solid asset base and an experience management team. And that's your egg news. Sports is next, but first we'll take a look at your egg prices. Every member of the City Centre Auto Body team has been through extensive training. We're constantly upgrading our team's education to reflect current collision repair technique. Taking a look at your local sports now, Spring Camp was excellent learning experience for AAA Bobcats players Javen Leslie and Ben Begrove, who have committed to the Junior A team this fall. Following a couple of opportunities this past season, both are excited to play a full AJHL campaign. My grandparents have been season ticket holders for ever, so I've been coming to watch the Bobcats since I was in initiation. And yeah, to be able to play in your hometown is kind of cool. Well, it's a team I looked up to when I was small as well, and it's actually really nice to get to play for them one day. After more than 12 hours of on-ice training this weekend, both are focused on improving their fitness over the summer. Off-ice training is obviously a big part of uh, training now and then also just get on the ice working on my skating and everything like that. Another adjustment is decision making. I need to learn just how to move the puck quickly. It's just get my head up, just make the quick play. Sometimes I struggled out there this weekend. Uh, just I got the puck and I just hold on to it too long. This pace is way faster in junior A, so I just really need to learn to get that puck and move it quickly and know where all the teammates are. The two joined 63 other players at spring camp. And during the Wrestlers Award banquet last week, a number of important announcements were made, including the critical addition of an athletic therapist. Less advertised was the decision to not host a conference championship next season. The decision is intended to give the staff a break after hosting a tournament annually for nearly a decade, as well as allowing for focus on other projects in the future. We get the reports back to say that uh, the student athletes and coaches are happy with the work we do in our community. Uh, we've added a bunch of pieces over the years to really elevate that student athlete experience when they come here for a championship. So it might be time for us again to maybe take our uh, hosting to the national stage and see how we do there again. Lakeland previously hosted the Women's Volleyball National Championship in 2013, where they finished with a silver medal. And now we're going to go to Brett Holden, who was on location earlier today. Pal Wakeland joins us once again here at Wildside Outdoors, and we're moving out to the water now. Uh, we're talking about fishing, so you have two different rods here. What's the difference between these two here? Well, we've got two different rods. One's a bait cast, and one's a spinning rod and and so a lot of the people are using spinning rods right now because they are pretty darn easy to use bait cast they are not so easy to use so so many people come in they try them out and then all of a sudden they'll bring them back and say ah oh, that's not for me um, they get tangled up very very easily now this one here is so easy once you get the hang of it it is really easy to learn but of course back in the day we all all used these ones they're a push button reel and you just push and hold and cast it as far as you want it to go when you're ready to release the hook at a certain distance you just let go of the button and it's uh, 
it's gone. So it's really, really easy to use this one too, so. Absolutely, and uh, with these two, it's a lot about uh, feel necessarily and not just yeah. how this comes through, right? Exactly, so a lot of the guys now, you'll see all the pros or a lot of the pros be using the bait cast and they like them because of that feel. They'll be able to uh, control the hook exactly the way they want to control it and they like the difference in speeds of the retrieval because the uh, reels come in different speeds. So that helps them a lot too. So a lot of these guys watch the TV shows and then they say that they want to try these things out but then they don't work out so well. So I tell everybody, take it in your backyard, try it for uh, a day or so. That way you're not out on the lake and want to throw it in a drink. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you for joining us once again. Okay, sounds good. We'll have a little bit more coming up from here at Wildside Outdoors as the weather's getting warmer and nicer, and I'm sure we're all thinking about uh, heading outdoors. So we'll have a little bit more coming up, but for now, let's head back into the studio. All right, thanks very much, Brett. Taking a look at your current temperatures right now, 5 degrees for us in this region here, 5 degrees for Lloydminster, Vermilion, Mar Wayne, 11 degrees out in Wainwright, Provost, and Macklin, 10 degrees out in St. Paul and Vegreville and Lac La Biche. Bonneville sitting at 9 degrees, 13 degrees for Cold Lake, 10 degrees also out in Pierceland, 10 for Vegreville, 13 for Edmonton. Out east, 11 degrees out in Greenland. Right now, 10 in Meadow Lake and St. Wahlberg and Maidstone, 8 degrees out in Isle La Crosse. Taking a look at some other temperatures in Saskatchewan, 7 degrees out in La Loche and Buffalo Narrows, 7 also out for Flin Flon, 9 degrees in La Range, 8 degrees for South and 4 for Wollaston Lake, Sto 5 excuse me for Stony Rapids there. Out in Alberta, 11 degrees currently right now in Slave Lake and Fort McMurray uh, and High Level also sitting at 11 degrees, 12 degrees currently sitting at for Peace River and 10 out in Grand Prairie. Uh, Fort Chippewa sitting at 9 degrees as well. Heading down south, 14 degrees right now for Lethbridge, 15 for Medicine Hat, 12 degrees for Calgary, 11 for Coronation, and 7 for Banff, 12 also out in Kindersley, 11 for Swift Current right now, 13 in both Moose Shaw and Regina and Estevan, and 11 degrees out in Yorkton right now. As we take a look at our temperatures for tomorrow, mostly 13 to Degrees for our region here. So 15 for Lloydminster, Maidstone, Provost, Macklin, Marwayne, and Pierceland. 13 degrees out in Lac La Biche and St. Paul. 14 for both Bonneville and Cold Lake there. 15 out in Green Lake. 14 for Isle Cross. 16 degrees in both Green for Vermilion and Wainwright as well. Taking a look at other out in Edmonton. 13 degrees sitting out in Edmonton right now. Take a look at the school day forecast tomorrow, 8 a.m., 3 degrees to start off with mostly sunny skies there and a bit of cloud coverage there. Recess, it will be mostly 7 degrees with, uh, with the daytime hot with the high there it, with a the sun and cloud mix there. 11 degrees at lunchtime there, 14 at home time as well with mostly sun and a few clouds there. As we take a look at the next seven days, 15 for Thursday with mostly cloud coverage there, 13 on Friday with a daytime high there and a low there of 4, 10 on Saturday with a 61% chance. We'll get some rain there. Two degrees the low there. The wind still reaching over 25 kilometers an hour there. Minus one those low on Sunday, reaching up to 13 the daytime high. 16 on Monday and 17 on Tuesday. All three days with mostly sun and clouds. Let's look at your seven days. We'll have more primetime local news after the break. And now we're going to go to Brett Holden, who is on location earlier today. We're back here at Wildside, and Cal joins us once again. This time we're talking about archery and archery or hunting with with a bow, which is uh, something that you say is more common than people think. Yeah, it's very very common. Uh, bear season, for instance, probably about seventy five percent of the hunters out there will actually shoot a compound bow or a recurve or a long bow. Um, for some reason, it's just uh, that kind of type of year and that animal that everybody just wants to get out there and try this uh, in, in archery. Now, another thing that happens is that they get into the, the, the bear and they end up taking a bear. Then all of a sudden they decide they want to try it with white tail and that kind of thing. And then, of course, it, gets, it just progresses from there. So archery is huge. Uh, a lot of the guys shoot compounds. That's what they want to shoot. And of course they hunt with compounds throughout the year as far as the uh, moose and elk go too. So, so what's, what's the main difference between a compound to a recurve to a long, uh, long bow? So a compound is very accurate. A lot of people don't know that how accurate they are. Uh, 90 yards is, is, uh, 
competition wise um, they shoot them out too. Also uh, recurves also they shoot that distance but of course they can't get as accurate. Compound has wheels on it so it makes it a lot easier to hold. You'll be pulling 70 pounds and then it'll break over and you'll be holding about 8 to 10 pounds is all. Uh, recurve it stacks to whatever poundage it's at so if it's at 70 you'll stack it to 70 and you'll be holding 70. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us and letting us come in. You got it. Thanks. We'll have a little bit more coming up from here at Wildside Outdoors, but for now, let's head back into the studio. All right, so with today being election day and with the advanced polls already happening earlier, and then we asked if you went out to the advanced polls, and also if you haven't, are you going to go out today and vote? You still got some time. There's still just under two, an hour and a half now mm -hmm. to go out and vote. So a whopping 90% are saying, yes, I'm going to go out and vote. I mean, it's important. I mean, I went out today for and voted. My first kind of like real like election, I guess you can say, because the first time I did was mostly for when I lived in Edmonton with city councils mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I didn't yeah. have a quite grasp understanding as I was just 18 at the time. Yeah. And then now it's a little bit bigger, bigger implications with, you know, with, with every, what everyone's saying and all that kind of stuff as well. But of course, you know, when I was there today, there was a good turnout. And of course, earlier today, there was some word that there was a good amount of lineups as well. And it's just yes. good to go out and for people to go out there and show and show their support and voice their yeah. opinions. Exactly. No, I think it's great. And it's, it's really nice to see that people are really interested in making sure that their voice are heard and they get the government that they're looking for and it's it's important so it's it's exciting that uh, it was record-breaking early yeah, advance no it polls, was yeah so. no, that's that's nuts I've never I don't think I've seen that like ever 000. yeah crazy I don't know if I mean that and then for of course for people that are like you know just turning 18 I did yes. see a gr young girl there today at the school that I was at and you know she looked like she just turned 18 so I mean that's good for her yeah. especially for younger people that you know don't really have the offer that may maybe didn't have the opportunity before yes. but now do or like yeah you know yeah. what I want to go out and do something that you know is meaningful and go yeah. out and vote and I find that I think now too, uh, lots of people are really wanting to educate themselves and are really looking into it more and and really uh, reading into uh, everything about yeah, it. So yeah, what everyone's saying, what everybody is uh, is wanting out of this, and so I think lots of people are very opinionated and and uh, really want to be a part of it. So it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's time for that part of the show right now where we get to take a look at pets because that's something we always something enjoy Something we all here. agree yeah, on. Yeah, we all agree pets, on here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> here at Pride Time Local News. So here's Chess to Chess start things off. Chess is super cute. It looks like the dog park or... Something. Yeah, ready to go enjoy the spring weather. Exactly. Yeah. So playing, playing some nice fetch. Next, yeah. we have Frisker just, you know... Frisker chilling. doesn't look like he's ready to go to the no. park or anything. Can you yeah. imagine <laughs> taking him to the park a or just a Cats cat Cats don't usually do well on leashes or anything well, like that. Well, so. I mean, our our boss Stacy has true. that's true. That's Her true. Her cats are okay with that. Yeah, some do. Yeah, so yeah. this is Ka Kana <laughs> Aww. So by Alora. Sweet with that face. Very cute. And yeah, just nice big little, smile. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Nice and cute there. Next we have Fox, who doesn't. Aww. Who's also not having it. A lot of the cats we've had today have been yep, chilling, they're and sleeping, feeling not the really. Yeah, lazy moods. Lady, lazy exactly, moods for the cats. Exactly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and last but not least, this is Nell. Aww. Up here. Very that cute name face. seems very fitting for the dog. Really? Nell. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Look at that face. Yeah, you can't say no to that face. <laughs> Little like Nell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, if your pet was shown on today, you're automatically entered to win a Lloydminster Pet Pack gift card, which you're giving away later this week on Primetime Local News. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. It's another pet project week here, and of course, I'm joined with Becca from the SBCA. So, Becca, who do we have here today? We've got some big boys today, yeah. so you want to talk about both of them here? <laughs> yeah, so you're holding Ichiban over there, and then this one's Max. 
Uh, so no. Max is actually our longest resident. He's been with us for about 54 days. No. Um, he's been with us for more, more that long, sorry, for uh, basically just had some health issues. Um, so we got that corrected and ready to go. So and same with Itchy Band there. He had a little bit of health issues as well too, but we got both these boys fixed up and um, Max had a, a bladder stone actually and then Itchy Band had, it's called entropion. So it's where the hair kind of grows on the inside of the eyelid. Oh, okay. So so actually uh, essential inspections kind of, they, they paid for the surgeries. So yeah, th absolutely. we really appreciate that for like, sure. They are pretty big. And of course, yeah. Ichiban here is just, just chilling away. He's having a nap. <laughs> yeah. He was more tame when I was trying to hold Max earlier. He was not a fan <laughs> of me and I don't blame him because most cats aren't. Um, I guess just, uh, I guess, uh, how did they come into the shelter? Were they just kind of drop offs? Are they strays? What's the story yeah. for them? So they were, uh, Max came in from Maidstone. So he was a stray from there. And H.E. Ban was a agency incoming, so the bylaw officer brought him into us. I I'm not sure from where exactly, but uh, yeah, so he was a stray from in the town that he was from, and then uh, he was brought to us when his stray hold was done. So he joined us, and then that's when we got him all fixed up. <laughs> so what kind of families or, I guess, homes would be best suited for either one of these yeah. two here? So Max, I think, would really be good anywhere. Um, I mean, obviously, with the, you know, if there's kids in the home, obviously, to know his limitations, just like any animal kind of thing. But uh, Max is fairly, he goes with the flow. He likes everybody. He likes his attention, especially, kind of thing. And then for Ichiban, I would say definitely a little bit more of a quieter home. Um, older kids, like teenager size, if, uh, if you do have kids in the home kind of thing. He is coming more and more out of his shell, we think, just with the pain of his eyes. Uh, right. That's really why he was a little bit more standoffish, so he is coming out of his shell quite a bit more. So that would maybe a little bit of a quieter home for him. Absolutely. And uh, just quickly, as we're kind of nearing the end also, um, you have your Easter egg hunt coming up, which yeah. is always a <laughs> fun time because it's fun to grab some of the dogs out and come hunt for Easter eggs with yeah. treats in them. So I guess just talk a little bit more about the event and the days, times, what people can expect. Yeah, so that uh, that's on this Thursday. So it's from four to seven and it's five dollars per dog. So and then if uh, even if you don't have a dog, um, we, you can come and use any of our dogs at the shelter. I'm sure they would enjoy an Easter egg hunt as well, too. And uh, you can just ha basically have a, a chance at winning some prizes. So um, it's just a nice, quick, fun little activity for you and your animal to <laughs> to come out and have a good time kind of thing. Absolutely, and I guess donations, are they still, like, are you, how are you guys doing on that front? And also with spacing with the animals. I know last time we talked to you, you had a bunch of dogs that you yeah. still have there. Is, there. is that still the case there? Or yeah, we don't have quite, quite as many dogs in right now, so that's kind of nice. I mean, we still are getting a few in. And same with the cats. We kind of have a few cats coming in as well too, but we're not jam-packed full right now, which is kind of nice. Um, so we're not overloaded right now, but uh, we did get our first little batch of kittens in last week. Aww. So we anticipate that that's kind of opened the floodgates a little bit. So I'm sure we'll see some more kittens here soon too. But uh, but yeah, other than that, we're not we're not too too bad. And Itchy Man, he wants to oh. leave. He's finally <laughs> woken up and he kind of wants to go and explore. He's <laughs> as he's trying to jump off here. And uh, yep, there he goes. There he'll go there. Well, Becca, that's thank you so much as always for coming <laughs> yeah, out. We for really sure. enjoyed talking to you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. Pet Project is brought to you by Quick Pick Waste Disposal, Lloydminster's number one waste and recycling hauler. Quick Pick is waste collection you can depend on. Well, today we embrace our inner wilderness man and we headed over to Wildside Outdoors. As you can see, I uh, do have this championship belt as uh, Wildside Outdoors is putting on this competition this summer. $20 for uh, entry. It goes to the person who has the biggest bear, who shoots the biggest bear, and uh, you get this championship belt, a coffee package, as well as a shotgun. So uh, you can come down to Wildside Outdoors and uh, enter that as well. And uh, as mentioned, Cal said that if bears are climbing up the tree as you are up there in your uh, the houses there, not to shoot them and uh, turn to the dark side here. Well, uh, that'll do it for us here at Wildside Outdoors. We will see you tomorrow. But for now, let's head back into the studio where Connor and Elise will wrap up the last hour of tonight's show. 
All right, thanks very much, Brett. Take a look at your seven day forecast one last time. 15 degrees tomorrow, 15 degrees also on Thursday, the low there of one degree, th 13 degrees, excuse me, the 40% chance we could see some rain with mostly cloudy skies there. Then we'll see a 61% chance of some showers on Saturday with a low there of two and a high of 10. Still winds reaching closer to 30 kilometers an hour on Friday, Saturday for the Easter weekend. 13 degrees on Sunday with a low there of minus one, 16 degrees the daytime high on Monday with that low of minus one still, with wind still reaching the 15 to 20 kilometer an hour range and a low of five on Tuesday with a high of 17 on Tuesday. Averages this time of year averaging around 10 degrees is the daytime high and minus two are the averages for the daytime low. So we're kind of around the ballpark in that area. So not bad. Nothing bad. Nothing wrong with those temperatures. No, it's not springtime and it's Ex warm and it's all good. Exactly. Now yeah. this is kind of a sad moment. Now, I didn't, <laughs> you didn't want this me to say this, but this is Elise Darwish's it's last my show. Last, cast. last show. Yeah. Well, what can you do, right? Yeah. Moving on. Moving on to bigger, better things. That's yeah. all we can really say. We all, we're, it's we're been all, a pleasure working with you, Connor. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. I thought you were going to say with everybody. But I mean, well, that's, well yeah, everybody. I mean, everyone's been. Yeah, that's true. I do appreciate that. We're going to yeah. miss having you around, yeah. around the community. I'm going to miss being in Lloyd. It's been yeah. great. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll, th well that's going to do it for us, folks. Have, Have a good, good evening. Night.